Now, the race for the presiding officers of the National Assembly continues to heighten as contestants for the position of Senate President and Speaker um, make frantic efforts to meet with President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu and position themselves for the jobs. Now, Tinubu had returned to Nigeria from France during the week after days of rest from the rigors of elections into the waiting arms of his All Progressive Congress. Uh, party leaders and enthusiasts, including those jostling for the Senate presidency and speakership uh, position. They all flocked around him as he arrived at the airport. He has since moved to the Defense House to await his inauguration as president uh, on May 29. The official residence has now become a mecca of sorts for all politicians uh, seeking his endorsement for political positions. Well, joining us in the studio is a prolific journalist, uh, Yusuf Olaniono, who is also the special advisor on media to former Senate President uh, Bukola Saraki. And also joining us right here is a member elect in the 10th Assembly, Philip Agbese, representing Ado Okboku uh, Ogbadibo uh, Federal Constituency in Benue State. Thank you, gentlemen, and welcome to the program. Uh, let's start with you. Uh, Honourable Member-elect, uh, talk to us about some of the permutations you've had uh, generally as to the race for the speakership position. Uh, thank you for having me this evening. Yeah, it, it has been a very interesting one, very beautiful. And uh, I want to believe now truly that Parliament is the beauty of our democracy in every sense. Uh, we what we the interest shown by Nigerians as well uh, in the leadership of both the Senate and the reps uh, is also a very good indication that Nigerians have full confidence in the set of legislators that the tenth National Assembly is going to produce and that the quality of personalities who have equally indicated interest in leading the National Assembly uh, for me it is a plus for our country it shows very well that we have evolved uh, democratic, uh, democratically, uh, things are taking shape with our democracy and uh, by God's special grace when the house is finally proclaimed, uh, we are going to have a very beautiful show uh, for the leadership of the Senate and uh, the House of Representatives. We have equally seen arguments for the North and the South, uh, permutations across uh, political parties and uh, so far so good. Everybody is working together to ensure that we have a rancorous uh, session on the day of inauguration. All and right. the best of us uh, is a throne at the various leadership structure of the House. Well, uh, we've seen several groups emerging with some calling themselves One Nigeria, the other United Nigeria groups and all of that. Uh, Yusuf Alani, you know, Nigerians don't have any votes on that day. It's only the elected parliamentarians. Uh, talk to us about some of the things, the best practices for electing a Senate president, electing a speaker, ensuring that, uh, you know, we don't have external interference because the primary job of electing the leader of these both houses is that of the <coughs> lawmakers. They are the ones who are to choose for themselves. Uh, the political parties may have a say, but it is whatever they decide to do on the floor that they, that will hold sway. Yeah. Uh, Somna, uh, good evening and good evening to all the viewers of uh, Rice TV. Now, to your question, the first thing is that uh, what we have been witnessing surrounding this uh, uh, struggle for leadership in the year to be inaugurated the 10th uh, National Assembly is an indication that our democracy has still not matured. It has not gotten to the point that we want. Look at the country that we model our democracy after, the United States. You see that, well, the Senate president is, uh, is not an important position because automatically the vice president, you know, is the Senate president. And, he, and so the most important position in the Senate, for example, is the majority leader. But you know, once a party emerges, either the Democrats, the Democratic Party, or the Republican Party, you already know who will be the majority leader. Because the person who is the leader of that party, either as minority leader, before they emerge as majority, yeah. automatically assume, become, the assume the position. And that's what we need to get to at this point. Where, But in this situation, you are even having somebody who has never had experience as a senator before, who is coming and bidding to become <laughs> senate president. You are having somebody who has only been in the House of Reps and has never been a senator wanting to be senate president. Counting on that, 
experience of uh, being a floor member in the House of Reps, I mean, and he wants to be Senate President. You also have some new members in the, in the uh, you know, when you are a new senator in the United States, you are a junior senator, you, even your uh, ability to even move a bill is restricted because every two, two years, that leadership change, you know, changes. Every two, two years, new senators are, are, are elected. So in where you have two senators representing one state in the U.S., there's a senior senator, there's another one. You can't find two senators from the same uh, state who are probably elected at the same time. So whoever has come first is a leader, is a leader in that state. And probably he will be the one who have more right to present bills on behalf of the state. So we need to get to that point. But when, we're getting, we're, we're in, so, sorry to interject, we're in a situation whereby some of the majority leaders don't even find their way back to the National, to the Assembly, National Assembly as exactly. mere elector. So how can you maintain yes, such but, a tradition? But, but, but you still have and, some... And with the first time has been given back in by some people who know the rules, the rules exactly. to go ahead yeah, and yeah, break I'm, the I'm, rule I'm, and all of that. that. That shouldn't be, really. The, the seniority, I mean, it's a, it's a convention. It's a legislative convention everywhere in the world. And ours shouldn't be different seniority ranking system and the the culture of the i mean i mean uh, of the of the legislature should be should, it should be respected now going to what we have now i think that at every point in time even when you go back to 1979 you see that the party has always had a say in the zoning arrangement we the 2011 became the the departing point for us in this country when the speakership was zoned to the southwest, and some some of the players that we have around now, leading players that we have around now, led the situation where the party zoned to southwest, and somebody from northwest emerged as speaker. Yeah, I mean, let's be very frontal here. Yes. <laughs> the president elect yeah, yeah, the president elect uh, showed yeah, that uh, exactly. Amir Kambal exactly. emerged exactly. instead of exactly. Mulika exactly. Takonde, Takonde. Yes. who had been exactly. endorsed. Exactly, yeah. that happened. Then you also find a situation that in 2015. The party set up a zoning uh, committee headed by Adam Sosiomole that zoned the position to North Central. And that zoning arrangement, that recommendation was never allowed to obtain. Do eventually, somebody from North Central emerged. Yeah, as, that's uh, your principal. Yes, uh, yeah, <laughs> as Senate president. Senate president, as, as, as Senate president. Then. But you see, because some people, a group within the party, which now presented itself as if it, it was the party, did not want somebody from North Central, rather would prefer somebody from another zone. That's when the departure from what is the norm, you know, started. No. If you go to 1979, for example, you say the party zone did, the party looked at it that the president, you don't even have six geopolitical zones, you only have North and South. And South but, well, yeah. but even then, what looked like a recognition of the six geopolitical zones happened. You have President Sheikh Shagari from Sokoto State, which is today's which is to this northwest emerged at the senate as the president and then the vice president from what is today the southeast then the senate president was zoned to what is today the south south senator joseph wires yeah the, the deputy senate wires. president was zoned to what is today the north central senator john washpa from uh plateau, plateau state, state from yeah. plateau state you go to the house of reps they did a similar thing where you have the speaker came from the southeast. What is today the southeast? The south. That's NMPP. Yes, exactly. The, the, the deputy senate president came from Kaduna State. You know that Musa. And then, what is northwest? What you could call the northwest now? And that's the way that zoning uh, arrangement uh, was respected. Yeah. Yes, exactly. so, so, you, so you still must have the party zoning the thing properly. And in so that so that the lawmakers can respect the All right, and I want to bring the in the lawmakers because okay. when <laughs> eventually these four hundred and sixty members, four hundred and sixty nine members, yes, yeah. are the ones who should decide their Yeah, and, and I bring in the honourable member elect here to talk about why new lawmakers are insisting that you should have a critical role to play in electing the speaker, for example. And then we have also had some. Uh, new members who are coming in with this idea that because the number of opposition party members in the House are more than that of the ruling party, that they should be the one to determine who becomes the speaker. Talk to us about some of those permutations. Well, uh, democracy is about number. 
I happen to be one of the new members. And uh, what we are doing, basically, is to be able to determine the affairs of the National Assembly, like people who have rightly been voted by their people, to represent them. Uh, with all due respect to whatever thing that transpired in the past, our assembly is not in a hurry to break the rules. We are not going to do exactly what was done in the past, the Saraki coup of 2015 and all of that. We respect our party leadership and uh, we also believe that even those who are coming from the opposition have the same amount of respect for their party leadership and the positions that they will take. What we, the new members, are saying is that based on the indices, the current indices of the House, the composition of the House, we should, to a large extent, be allowed to determine some of these things. That doesn't mean that uh, we have a rigid position on how these things should be done. There's no new member of the House that is asking for a change of the rules. The, other, uh, the, 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 the current standing rules of the House 2020 is there, and uh, I haven't seen any new member agitating for a change uh, of that. All we are saying is that, one, we have a group called the New Vision, we have another group called the Nationalist Forum, and several other groups. Yeah, I think you belong to the Nationalist Forum or something like yes, that. Yes, I'm the convener of the Nationalist Forum. Oh, okay. Forum. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> and what we are saying, basically, at the Nationalist Forum, is not just about the leadership of the House. It is about a leadership that is able to deliver to the Nigerian people. It is a leadership that is able to marry its objectives with that of the executive. We don't want a leadership that will run, you know, a, a, a kind of parallel government. Yeah, but, but, but does the president-elect have any... Uh, say eventually on how you, the lawmakers, are going to vote because we've seen the defense house where he is now turning to all sorts of uh, mecca for you know people wanting the, the, to get his the, attention. The, the, the president elect, God so kind, is a democrat. I think what my colleague here, uh, when he mentioned 2011, the case of Tamboa, is just uh, part of the president elect democratic credentials. <laughs> when, yes. of turning the no, no, decision no, no, no. of the party because no, he, he, he this is, not, he's also a senator no. too he was a senator in the yes. Aborted Third Republic yes. he did not obtain the decision of the house what happened in 2011 was a majority of members elect went to him as a leader of as a senior leader in one of the then greatest political parties and said to him that you know we want to produce a leadership that will work for the Nigerian people and that's exactly what we are saying at the Nationalist Forum we want to use our numerical strength as new members to determine a leadership that works for the Nigerian people. The fundamental question I've continued to ask people, when they make uh, reference to certain president in the past, I ask them of what negative impact, of what positive impact did that have on the system as it were at that time? And sometimes they say, well, it ran very well. So if whatever was done, I respect my political party. And we're expecting the party to do the zoning arrangement that will take into consideration some of the issues but that we have raised. But are you willing to go against the party? <laughs> because if the party's zoning arrangement doesn't suit you, no, why do you rebel? Because no, you no, are no, the no, we, voters. No, we, we, no we, we, are not, we are not going to rebel. And I can tell you that uh, we can foresee what the party is going to do with the zoning. For instance, in 2022, prior to the, uh, our, our party primaries for the presidential poll, the Progressive Governors Forum came out to say the zoning of the presidency is to the south. So we are equally expecting a situation where the party will come, come out to tell us that the zoning of the speakership as it stands today is to the north. The major problem will be where the party goes further to engage in microzoning. And okay. for us at the Nationalist Forum, we believe that is not too good enough. Because, for instance, just yesterday, our uh, senators from the North Central have endorsed a deputy senate president other than whatever we, we read in the news to be the thinking of the party. Okay, now, so there are other the groups rebellion too. has started. Yes, there are other groups, <laughs> there are other groups okay. in the North Central. Very quick you know, where some of us, in. yes, where some of us are equally, you know, thinking uh, that uh, we need something in the North Central, you know, something major to be given to us. Also looking, uh, asking for the speakership. 
then the majority of the members of the house are saying no irrespective of the zoning arrangement just tell us we are zoning the speakership to the <coughs> north and we will go amongst ourselves just like uh, uh, the president the elect person. just like the president elect supported the then uh, members elect in 2011 to do to get the best person uh, okay. from the north. And I bring you back, uh, Yusuf Olani Ono. These are interesting times. From everything that has been said, it looks like we're still teaching towards 2011 and 2015 scenarios. Uh, but let's talk about the role of political party, especially uh, away from the presiding officers. You also have the principal, other principal officers, like the majority leader and all of that. In all of this, talk to us about how we can ensure that there's a seamless transition uh, for the National Assembly and then for the Nigerian people not to be deprived of a national assembly that will fight for them. Because the last, the outgoing national assembly has been accused of being in bed with the executive, and it's been called a rubber stamp. Yeah, uh, number one, let me first correct uh, the impression, because if we are on a program like this, we shouldn't engage, engage in uh, revisionism. There was no coup in 2015. What happened in 2015 was that a group hijacked the party. Let me not use the word hijacked now, seized the party and presented itself as if it was the party. A group of just about four people. Are you talking about the ACN faction? Of yes, the exactly, exactly. Yes, they hijacked the party and presented itself as a party and subverted the zoning uh, formula. And you are not mentioning names, yeah, exactly. uh, but it and, looks and, like and, and when, it's and, the and, same and, set of people and when they who did, are in government. And when they did, now. some members revolted against that subversion of the party's position and restored what ordinarily should be the party's position, take it to North Central. That was what happened. So now, let's go to what is the role of the political party. And that's why I went to 1979, which was actually the first time we practiced a presidential system, system of, of government, government. Yeah. where you have a senior president being number three in the hierarchy. hierarchy. Of government. Now, the party at every point in time must be honest to itself and to its members. The party must sit down and agree on a zoning formula that takes its bearing first from the president and down to even the chief whip and the deputy chief whip in both the Senate and the House of Reps. Everything should be zoned in such a way that each of the six geopolitical zones must have something to take away to its people. Yeah, as we try to round off this conversation, yeah. I want you to emphasize on that. How do we ensure that a leadership that is pro-people emerges so that we don't have the accusations of another rubber stamp again? And then, of course, uh, there has to be a fine line, too, so that the president-elect, when he becomes president, doesn't have a uh, Senate president or a speaker that's antagonistic to his vision and that of the party. No, you, you see, once the party is honest in the zoning arrangement, the next thing is allow the members. The, that zoning arrangement is just to guide the members. What it has done, once you zone the Senate presidency, for example, to North Central, you know that only about 18 senators from North Central will be qualified to contest. Those 18 well, may not even, all of them may not even be, be. It has to be 19 yeah. because you didn't add FC. Add FC to 19. <laughs> all of them may not even be from the, same, the, 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 the majority party. So if there are just 12 of them that are from majority, majority party, party, only those 12. Then you now look for who is the most competent. Now, this is where you have the, 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 the party's manifest, manifesto and the legislative agenda coming together and drawing from the same pool. So when you, are zoned, when you have already zoned, you now look for who is the most competent, who is the most experienced, who can deliver, and then you, you can then help that one to grow. Okay. But it's also very important that while the party is doing that, it must also allow members to have their say. You see, the pro problem that we had between 1999 and 2007, when Senate presidents were being impeached, was because those Senate presidents were imposed from outside. How come that in four years, despite all the onslaught against Araki, he was, they were not able to remove him? Because the senators adopted him as their own. So he had the backing of the majority, the backing of the yes, not exactly. all though, no, yeah. because not the all. incumbent uh, yeah, exactly. APC yes. chairman no, no. and but the incumbent no, deputy senator president all fought the against him. That's a no, the, no, the, the, the incumbent chairman of the party turned out later, turned against 
later. He was a key supporter. He was mm. even his coordinator. Yeah, yeah, I remember, Actually, remember. when he was given a exactly. chairman of agriculture. Yeah, 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 exactly. and all so, of that. Well, <laughs> so, so the one we are saying, that, allow they, they, the senators, once you have zoned very well, honestly too, and in conjunction with the legislators, then allow them to pick who is okay. the, who is Sometimes the best. it can actually exactly. go against the president yeah. elect yes. and what he wants. Uh, let's uh, round off from this perspective. How do we ensure that we don't have a National Assembly leadership that is a rubber stamp, uh, but you know, a leadership that works on behalf of the Nigerian people? And then how do we ensure that within that perspective, the president elect or the president, when he comes in, uh, doesn't seem uh, like an orphan? And, uh, you know, that, that's to say he didn't have a say as to who should be his uh, principal leaders in the National Assembly. Well, uh, the president elect is a good Democrat. He is like a father. Uh, he, before he left the country, I'm talking about my own political party. We had a meeting with the national leadership of our party, and uh, we were to brainstorm on the issue of zoning. And I think what they failed to do in the past was to give rooms for the lawmakers to make contributions into places where positions should be zoned to. So the APC at this moment is leading by example uh, for the first time, which shows again that uh, the president-elect wants to work for the Nigerian people. And uh, we, we had our first meeting. We are going to have another meeting again. At that meeting, it is expected that uh, members elect and the senators elect will make contributions into that zoning uh, debate. And uh, again, I want to warn against a situation where some persons who already have candidates uh, are allowed to participate in the zoning All right, sir, because that will thing. breed some sort of a mutual suspicion. A situation where uh, a governor or a national leader of the party had already indicated interest in a certain candidate, and uh, that same national leader of the party uh, is again proposing a zoning arrangement mm -hmm. that favors that candidate, mm -hmm. it will be counterproductive. <laughs> so there's a crisis that is already brewing at yes. the moment. So for so us, I think uh, uh, many people that I have spoken to, and many members of the Nationalist Forum that I'm the convener, have said to us to say, People who already have their candidates, uh, if they participate in this zoning debate, they are going to uh, poison the process and they are not going to accept that the outcome of that process. Uh, all right. Well, it boils down to what you said. Eventually, the members of the National Assembly will find their strength because they are the people who are going mm -hmm. to vote. Mm -hmm. And if that of the party or president like, doesn't align with what they think is in the sense of transparency and fairness, they will take a decision for themselves and by themselves. Uh, we must thank you so much. Uh, Philip Agbese is a, a member-elect representing Ado Okpoku uh, Ogbadibo. Uh, federal constituency in Benue State, and then uh, we've had our own uh, Yusuf Olani Onyo, who's a uh, renowned journalist, and then of course a special advisor on media to former president of the Senate, uh, Bukola Saraki. We must thank you immensely for being on the program, and we hope to have you. I mean, it's still a long time between now and June 13 to talk more about this, but this is where we just have to uh, bring uh, today's show to a close. We must thank you immensely for watching uh, this program, and we hope to have you some other time next week. Stay with us. I'm Samna Sam. Nassam.